Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Magic QLC Plus. Um, today we're going to be covering some of the behind the scenes stuff to do with how lights and channels actually work. So we're not actually going to get into much practical stuff but cover more sort of theory of how lights in general work. This will be applicable to any lighting program, lighting desk or any sort of system like that. So at the moment we have a blank QLC plus file, so we've just opened up QLC plus, so we've got nothing but this program open. So if we go into our inputs and outputs, we can see we have multiple universes. A universe uh, defined as 512 channels, so each channel, I'll go into deeper explanation in a minute of what each channel does. So the universe is a select set of channels. Um, here in the latest version of QLC you can add and change the universes so we can uh, have lots of more inputs to it. Usually you'll have some sort of device going from your computer to your DMX control so this will be say a USB to DMX box, USB to DMX cable or something similar along those lines. From this we can then control the lights within it. So you can go into here and select your um, USB to DMX device or if you're using ArtNet, select your channels and set that up. Not going to go into that because that's completely dependent on what hardware you're using. Usually if you plug in a USB device this will automatically detect it and then you can just click on the output for it and it will start outputting to that channel. So for each channel we control different lights. So if we go into the fixtures tab and then add a new light or add a new fixture, um, it comes up with this dialog box. So depending on what sorts of lights you have depends on what sort of setup you need for it. So at the moment we're on the generic dimmers. So this is one channel for one light and you can see we're adding it to universe one. So you can select your different universes if you're using multiple outputs or you, if your output has multiple universes. And then you've got the address of it. So this address is the number between 1 and 512 of what the channel will use. So on your demo rack or on the back of your light you'll have something which declares what number you want it set to. So often you'll have a dip switch like this on the back of the light to set it to a particular channel if you're using that source of light or your dimmer rack will have light set up for it. So this is where we set up those different channels. So we can set which channels we want, uh, set which address that channel is going to be on. Um, in the generic options we've got how many channels each light is going to use um, but with a standard uh, par light or something we'll just have one channel for going up and down and then say let's add five generic lights with an address of uh, a gap of zero. So if we add those you can see the address of each one is one and two and three and four and five. So each of these five lights will then have uh, basic control. So if we go into the simple desk we can see we've now got these five lights and you can see by this icon that it's just controls the intensity. So if I drag this up and down you can see that the values in the fixture monitor change. So if we just put the fixture monitor over on this side we can see that that's what the light is going to be doing. So if you've got your light plugged in, out, it's a generic light with on channel 1, then your light will be going up and down right now, same as that value. So why would you need so many channels? For these basic lights, you really don't, unless you've got 512 PAR, um, par cans or something on your system, then you really don't need this many channels. However, if you get into more complicated lights, such as LEDs or moving heads, then you'll need multiple lights. Uh, you need multiple channels per light. So if we go back into the fixtures, and I can add another light. 
uh, let's use one I've used before, so one of the Euro lights, <coughs> say LGB uh, that one. So in here we've got the name of a particular type of light, mode, so some uh, lights will have modes on them, so you can match these up to the modes. Um, again we're selecting the universe and the starting channel of it, and then we'll have the different channels for it. So on this particular light, we have the first channel is assigned to red, second is green, then blue. Uh, four is dimmer, so that will be the intensity, same as on the generic lights. And then we've got one for controlling a strobe. Again, we can add multiple of these and have a gap between each one if we want. But here I'm just going to add one light. So you can see it there, and it's got a different icon on it because it's a different form of light. So if we go back into the simple desk, now for this one light we're using five channels, whereas before we were using one channel per light. So if we bring up the monitor again, we can see that that light has the different values. So we can bring up red, bring up green, and bring up blue. But that won't be turning the light on because the intensity is still at zero. So we then turn up the intensity, we've now got a fully bright light with a sort of ready green colour. So that would be 100% red, that would be 100% green, and that would be 100% blue. The strobe, um, that will vary depending on what functions the light has. If you look at your manual for the individual lights, it will tell you what the, each function does. So that was a quick intro in how to use these lights and what lights do in QLC Plus and kind of generically any programmable control system. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give us a like. If you want to see more of these, subscribe. I should be putting them out fairly regularly now. I've got some free time. Uh, thanks for watching and see you all again next time.